Metalhead Prime here, and I'm actually going to try to do an educational video, or at least somewhat educated experience video about that. If you'll notice, we're in the pool room where all of the fish stuff is now. Um, I've been getting a few questions about sumps since I have a successful one now. You might recognize this little guy. It was actually one of the dual sumps, which Turned out to be a horrible idea. The other one became a home for other fish at another place. This one I have left that I'm probably going to build a rack right here and have, I don't know, little breeder tanks or whatever. I don't know yet. I haven't gotten that far. Anyways, I figured, you know what? I have enough stuff laying around. I can just kind of give you guys an idea. If you're struggling, maybe I'll have the aha or Somebody will watch this and say, this guy's totally wrong, but here's how you do it anyways. So, and I welcome that. So anyways, to get started, this is just a representation of the tank itself. And some people may have troubles setting up the sumps. Now I'm gonna turn this around so that this annoying label that I've never taken off is out of the way. <clears throat> so for representation, the way I have my sump set up, it's basically just a skimmer. It's, it's not even really for primary filtration. But if you're going to use one for that, it's not a problem. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to gauge how deep you have your inlet, your outlets. Just depends on how you want your column to be. Um, my, my inlet and outlet are real tall in the tank. They are just about up to here on the 165. Um, and that's basically just because when these guys were in that tank, they eat and poop a lot. So they needed skimmers <laughs> because the Oscars are messy eaters and split, split. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, now the fish that are in there, they're not half as bad. I probably don't even necessarily have it on there, but it's there, so why not use it? Uh, so, anyways, you can go lower in the tanks. I mean, you can run them clear down here like this. You can have them scrape in the gravel if you want. Uh, but keep in mind, if you have power failure or you turn it off for some reason to clean the tank or whatever the story is, if you turn the tank, if the pump loses power in the sump, the problem you're going to have, if you don't do it right, is the suction will not stop. You have to be able to break the suction. There is an easy, easy trick for that. If I can find it. <laughs> okay, so imagine... Let's just say, for giggles here, let's just say your, your inlet is set up like this. Okay, now what you want to gauge is how far you're going to allow the tank to drain down before it breaks the siphon. And there's a very simple and easy trick for that. Let's say if you want it to come down maybe a quarter of an inch and you don't want it to go past that. Simple trick. You take a drill bit and you just punch a hole. Once you've got it gauged out and you've figured out where that is, you're just going to punch a little hole through one end of the, of the pipe. And then what's going to happen is once the water hits that hole, it's going to draw air in, it's going to break the siphon. Therefore, you don't have a nice little mess if you're at work or if you're in bed or whatever the case may be, and the power decides to click, go off, you're gonna be fine. So, another trick that you're gonna to wanna to do, it's not really a trick, um, something that will help, depends, um, a lot of sumps that depend on placement from the tank. Most of them are under them. Sometimes you see them when they're on the side, they're in a different room, whatever. Um, Judging by the size a diameter pipe that you use for your sump setup, you're going to want a ball valve. This is a shutoff valve, which 
I suppose you could probably use, but ball valves work way better sometimes. Uh, <laughs> anyways, mine is run on the back, so it's like this, and that's the wrong size pipe, but nobody cares. Uh, and anytime, if I feel that it's feeding too much water into the sump, I can come and close that off. And then you find a happy medium, and that's how you balance your sump. You want to be able to control the flow of water coming out and control the flow coming in. That way you're not overflowing one and not enough on the other. So biggest keys, if there's any key takeaways, is make sure, and again, if you, if you are going to run a low inlet, then you want your, your, your I don't know, anti-siphon hole, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you want to gauge, okay, let's just say I don't want it to come more than a half an inch from the rim. All right, so then what you're going to do again is you're going to come to about a half an inch down that pipe and punch a little hole in it. And it doesn't have to be a huge hole. Okay. I did mine with um, an eighth inch bit, I believe. Real tiny little hole. Mm -hmm. And it works great. Again, that's just a skimmer. I mean, mine is literally this, this high in the tank. So I really don't even need one because once the water level drops, it's gonna kill the siphon anyways. But for those of you who are gonna run your, your inlets lower, very important to figure out how low you are going to allow this tank to go before it needs to pop that siphon off. Now they do make, um, anti-siphon equipment. Uh, a lot of the custom uh, sumps companies, they, uh, they have all sorts of contraptions to break siphons. Um, this is DIY, so this is something that you gotta figure out on your own. Um, now, that's pretty much the, diff the most difficult part there. Um, one thing I do suggest is to either find some sort of grate that you can put on here at your inlet, um, even if you can modify just old parts laying around, like something like that, just to cover your inlet up, just in case you get you get small fish in there. They will get pulled in mm -hmm. um, if you have something go wrong in another tank and you gotta kind of dump them all into that tank. Those fish, if they're small enough, they will get pulled in. My sump on the 165 uses a uh, three quarter inch pipe, PVC. So yes, I lost, actually the one of the last fish I lost during that whole event um, got pulled into the sump and got stuck. And mine has sort of a, uh, I'm sure you've seen it, but it sort of has this little set up on it at the top. Well, he got caught right in here and he got caught in there sideways all because I didn't have a grate because the fish that were previously in there were big enough that I didn't have to worry about it. So that's another food for thought for you. Um, now let's say, let's pretend that we've got our tank set up. Okay. Now we're getting to the sump. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. And you know what I'm going to do just because I can. I do this. So I don't have to read this high. So now we're on our sump. So the important thing is you want to have your inlets set up right now. These are actually old inlets that I used when I was having the fiasco of trying to get that dual sump stuff to work. Dumb idea. But let's just pretend here that this is how you want it to be and this is perfect row, then it's all set up, it's all plumbed, it looks great, this isn't here, you don't see it, it's magic. Poof, it's gone, okay. Anyways, here is your fill coming into the sump. Now you don't have to have any kind of special store-bought sock holder, but it really helps. Um, you can make them out of egg carton, I've done that in videos, you've seen it before, and it just so happens 
that I've broken every piece that I've made. But, again, we're in pretend land. That's creepy. Uh, I have one that's not completely broken. <laughs> so, that's still wet. I know, whatever, it's fine. It's not being used. Anyways, so, what I've done was I've taken some egg carton, and you guys have seen me do this. I've taken egg carton, I've cut notches out so that I could put socks in and out of them. They worked somewhat okay. They were more of a hassle than anything because as you can see, it's not easy to get them in and out of there because I don't care how much you try, egg carton will still always be jagged. Anyways, all right, enough of that. So, always want some kind of support. You don't have to use egg carton, you can use plexiglass, whatever you got. It will work, all it's gotta do is hold a sock. So then you just want to uh, make sure that you give yourself enough room so that you can take the sock up or do whatever you gotta do with it. The problem I have and still have in the other tank that I do have the sump on, I don't have a lot of room between here and here. Because it's in the cabinet. Uh, so I kind of got to do what I got to do in that one. Um, but what I actually found, and I would take them out and show you guys, but it's really hard to get them in and out because I literally have this much room to play with. Um, what they are is they are basically little pl uh, plastic cups that have slits cut in the side of them. And you can load those up with media however you want. And it basically eliminates the need for socks because these socks with those six fish seven fish yeah seven would clog up in, in an hour sometimes it didn't even take that long so these new socks that I'm, I'm guessing you call them socks I call them a filter uh, they don't clog up if they do they still have plenty of slits in them the water spills right out. So I've actually got some foams down in there and I've got some bio balls kind of floating around in there and then I've got bio balls throughout the rest of my sump. So most other sumps, if you buy pre-built ones, they're gonna have little break walls in them. And it might look something like this where one's taller than the other. It's perfectly fine or it might be vice versa, whatever. You can stuff media in here it's fine um all of, all that those are really meant to do is kind of slow the flow of water down uh just to allow whatever media you're using to kind of uh i guess uh build up the bacteria that it's needing so anyways most of them the way they're going to be is you're going to have your spill in and then you're gonna have a, a little break wall right here. Now I've actually loaded mine up with uh, foams uh, and then it spills into another spillway on this one that I got. This one is a 20 long. Um, I don't particularly remember what brand something that was. It was uh, a maker out of Chicago. But anyways, I've got my, uh, my I call them sponges. That's basically all they are. And then I've got another chamber that's just nothing of bio balls. And then it comes into a final chamber. And that is what houses our pump. And this one, you can actually control your flow rate right on the side, um, which makes it very handy. And actually the one that I have in the pool is just the same thing, just twice as powerful uh, and all you do from there is you plumb out of your pump and into your uh, I guess you could call it your outlet which would actually be your in it's confusing <laughs> but you're coming out of the sump you're plumbing into the other side which let's just pretend is this little guy right here and this one I don't use any ball valves, I don't use nothing on this. Because if I want this to cut off, I'm turning the pump off. So, 
that's that. There's really nothing to it, um, but it's important that you find the proper pump to use. Um, you don't want to use one that's too weak. You don't want to use one that's too hard or too powerful, like that one. <laughs> this one's handling a 608 gallon pool with no trouble. It's got a 50 gallon barrel up to 40, 50 gallons of water. It did, it does that with ease. Um, a little too crazy for a 20 gallon sump. These guys, um, doesn't really give me eh, 2000 liters an hour. I don't know what that is in gallons. <laughs> so, but it does just fine. It did just fine when it was in this sump. It does, the one I have upstairs does just fine up there in that one. And actually I run that one somewhat closed off. But you can also play with your ball valve on your, in, on your inlet and kind of control the flow so you could technically run these wide open. Uh, that's just something that you pretty much, you got to do yourself there. Um, you got to find your, your happy medium for your tank and your sump. Um, the, the one thing I will say if you run dual sumps, <laughs> you're, you're in for it. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is, uh, John at KG, KG Tropicals had the same problem. He couldn't get one to compensate with the other. I could get it to work for a few hours and then it would goof up. It didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter if I put a ball valve on the back. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if I made both pipes feeding both sumps. And what I mean by that is if I made both these pipes the exact same length and turned them down the exact same way and turned the sumps the exact same direction, it didn't matter. Because what happens is water is going to take whatever course water wants to take. Sometimes water will run this way more than it will run this way. So this tank will drain out. The other one will fill up faster. That was the problem I kept having. It wasn't a problem on if it was working or not. They were working, but they were just so hard to synchronize. I, I got fed up with it and I just ditched that whole idea, went with a single sump and I haven't had a problem since. It works great. It has two socks or cans that, fil that filter, spills off, goes through bio balls, goes out the pump and back in the tank. Plain, simple, nothing to it. Don't try to, I guess, if I can say anything, do yourself a favor and don't try to make sumps too difficult because you will drive yourself nuts, completely nuts. You will do videos about it and just drive yourself nuts. So you can avoid the trouble or you can do the videos because those are entertaining too. But if you were going to take my advice, this would be the better way to go. Just do one. And it... Depending on your tank, it doesn't have to be that big. Um, it, you know, if you're if you're doing this with a 55 gallon tank, a 10 gallon sump's more than perfect. Mm -hmm. You could even do it with a five gallon if you wanted. A um, little trickier to make everything work, but the bigger the sump, the easier they are to work with. Um, but again, if you're just starting out and you're wanting the easy, basic. Let me get a sump going and play with it. The way to go is just get a 10 gallon, get some PVC piping and try it. And you will also pick up tricks and tips on the way. Um, and I am 90% of the time I'm accessible. So you guys can either comment on the video if you have a question or if a lot of you know how to get a hold of me through Facebook or, or whatever the case may be. You know, if you're on one of our lives, feel free to ask. You know, I don't. I don't know the answer to everything, but I will try my best to answer. So, uh, but there's always other people that are usually on our lives that probably know a lot more than I do. <laughs> so one way or another, we'll get you an answer. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask if you ever have any questions. That's, there is no stupid question. Well, I take that back. There is. The only stupid question is the one not asked. So basically, I hope this video helps you guys. Um, if not, feel free to reach out to me and maybe say, hey, could you go a little bit more in depth as to 
what you were getting at here, like if uh, the anti-siphon hole, if that didn't make sense, then just reach out to me. We'll, we'll work it out. But uh, anyways, there's my educational video for the week. I hope it helps you guys out if you're having sump problems or if you're just curious and don't know. Hope it helped out. So anyways, guys, it's fun time now. So have a great week. Have a killer weekend. It's almost here. And most importantly, stay metal.